I believe many of you are looking forward to this lecture. You might have seen pictures on the internet of AI appearing to ponder with its hand on its chin. How exactly does AI think and learn? In this lecture, we will explore this topic with concrete examples. First, let's briefly review what we've learned so far. Machine learning is a field of artificial intelligence where machines learn through data. We learned in a previous lecture that machine learning can be divided into supervised learning, reinforcement learning, and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning is the most widely used and fundamental of these three fields. It involves creating a model that takes an input value X and outputs a value Y. The Y value is the correct label provided by humans to the machine. The machine learns to output the correct label Y given an input value X. Since humans provide the correct labels, this is called supervised learning. We will examine how machines learn using an example of supervised learning. We will use an AI that predicts science scores based on math scores as an example. We will create a model that takes a student's math score as input and predicts their science score. We will then examine the process of how this model learns through data. First, in machine learning, the first task to be performed is selecting a model. A model is a function that outputs a value y when given an input value x. There are various types of models used in AI. For this example, we will use a simple linear model y equals wx. Here, x is the input value representing the math score, and y is the output value representing the science score. w is the coefficient of the function and is derived from the first letter of weight. In machine learning, coefficients are often referred to as parameters or weights. Next, we need to collect data for the model to learn from. We have represented the collected data using both a table and a graph. For this example, we assume that we have collected data from four students, although typically more data would be collected. For student 1, the math score X is 80, and the science score Y is 95. For student 2, the math score X is 50, and the science score Y is 45. Once the model has been selected and data collected, we can proceed with the actual training process. For reference, the process of a model learning is also referred to as training. Initially, parameters and weights are set randomly. In this example, let's assume the initial random value of parameter W is 0.1. Since the current W is 0.1, the model is represented by the function Y equals 0.1x. The first step in the training phase is to output the predicted values using the current model. This means inputting X values, which are the math scores of four students, 80, 50, 60, and 100, to estimate their science scores. Let's examine the first student's score. The math score, X, is 80, and the predicted science score is 8 points, obtained by multiplying by 0.1. However, the student's actual science score is 95, which is significantly different from the predicted 8 points. This is a natural result since we are still in the early stages of learning, and the model will gradually reduce this difference. For reference, the predicted Y values are commonly denoted as Y hat to distinguish them from the actual Y values. The second step in the training phase is to calculate the loss. The loss refers to the difference between the actual Y value and the predicted Y value. As shown in the table, for the first student, the actual science score is 95 while the predicted value is 8, resulting in a very large loss. Similarly, for the second student, the actual science score is 45, but the predicted value is 5, also leading to a very large loss. A large loss is not desirable as the goal of learning for the model is to reduce the loss. The length of the red dotted lines in the graph on the right represents the magnitude of the loss. The third step in the training phase is optimization. Optimization refers to updating the parameters, or weights, in such a way that the loss decreases. In this example, 
let's assume the W value has been updated from 0.1 to 0.3. In the graph on the right, you can see that the updated W value makes the model fit the data more closely than before. However, it still seems to require further adjustments. Typically, during training, a model improves iteratively and gradually, rather than in a single update. Therefore, the steps of calculating predicted values, calculating the loss, and optimization from the previous training must be repeated. When using a W value of 0.3 to predict science scores, the table shows the following results. For the first student, with a math score of 80, the predicted science score is now 24 points. Although there is still some difference from the actual science score of 95, it is an improvement over the previously predicted score of 8 points. Next, we calculate the loss. We can see that the difference between the actual Y values and the predicted Y values has decreased compared to before. However, there is a need to further reduce the current loss. To decrease the current loss, we perform optimization by adjusting the parameters. The value of W has been changed from 0.3 to 0.5. We repeat these three stages of training, calculating predictions, calculating loss, and performing optimization. The value of W is gradually updated to reduce the loss. As shown in the graph on the right, the model gets closer to the densely populated area of the data. At some point, the loss will no longer decrease. When the loss no longer decreases, we stop training. In this example, we stop training when the value of W reached 1.2. Looking at the graph on the right, it appears that the model has converged well to the densely populated area. We initially set the model equation as y equals wx, and through training, the value of w converged to 1.2. Thus, the final equation of the trained model is y equals 1.2x. By inputting the math score x into this model equation, we multiply it by 1.2 to predict the science score. We have now learned how artificial intelligence learns and predicts. In the end, Machine learning means finding the parameters, or weights, within the model. Parameters here refer to the coefficients of the function. So, when a model learns, it is essentially the process of finding coefficients. The initial model is like an empty house, with parameters not yet determined. Through learning, the appropriate parameter values are updated, similar to filling in details like windows, doors, and chimneys for a house. In the machine learning example we saw earlier, we used a simple model with only one parameter, w, in the y equals wx equation. However, recent models have a very large number of parameters and complex structures. GPT-3, a recent artificial intelligence model that has amazed the world, is a massive AI model with 175 billion parameters. These massive AI models mostly belong to the field of deep learning. We will learn about these massive AI models in the deep learning section of this course. Although there are many parameters, the learning method is not much different from the example we saw earlier. It is simply performing the tasks we saw in the example for each of the numerous parameters. Therefore, a lot of computation is required for learning and it is impossible to train a model without high-priced computer equipment. Finally, let's review the terms that came up in this section. A model refers to a function with parameters, or weights. Parameters, or weights, are values that need to be found through learning. Loss refers to the difference between the predicted Y values and the actual Y values. A lower loss is better and updating the parameters to reduce the loss is the meaning of the model learns. The process of updating the parameters to reduce the loss is called optimization.